If you would like to support the channel, then please turn off adblock and refresh the page. Alternatively, use the link in the description below to donate to T1 Patreon. Thank you. Hello Magic Community on YouTube, T1 Glistenerolf here. I'm going to be playing Modern again. This is the Untap Open League Season 8. This is my deck. I'm on, as you can see, good old Murfuck. So I'm running uh, four Biomancers, two Mistcallers. Now, this, the decks had to be submitted before Modern Horizons, so no inclusions there. That doesn't necessarily help me, but it would likely make my opponents a lot strong. No, it, not likely. It would make my opponents a lot stronger. But this is a pretty stock list. Only one Thassa, two Spell Pierce. Uh, and then the usual, I guess, snow-covered island because, one, look at that art, two, why not? It doesn't make any difference. And then our sideboard option, Ceremonious Rejection, Graftdigger's Cage, Gut Shot, Relic, Vapor Snag, Echoing Truth, Wizard's Retort, and one Master of Waves. Shoutouts to Master of Waves. Uh, my opponent is on Affinity, and ooh, is this going to be fun. So, three Memnite, four Ornithopter. For Signal Pest, for Arcbound Ravager, for Steel Overseer, for Vault Scourge, as you do, usual. Vault, uh, Galvanic Blast, that's not going to be fun. Mox Opal, Welding Jar, eh. Springleaf Drum, Cranial Plating, Experimental Frenzy, which is not too slow for this matchup, so that's a little scary. By the way, shoutouts to the dulcet tones of rain. I'm hoping, like, you know how in Pokemon, water Pokemon get stronger when it's raining? I'm hoping that that'll happen with, uh, with Merfolk here. <laughs> that's that's the hope anyway. Uh, Dispatch, Spell Pierce, Ancient Grudge, Rest in Peace, Blood Moon, Echo, uh, Etch Champion, Gear for Ether Grid, and Wear Tear. So Dispatch seems easy. Etch Champion is. Uh, I guess we'll talk more about this when we get to sideboard games. So for right now, here we are, and uh, my browser is not frozen anymore. So we can actually we can actually do this. So I'm going first. This seems like an easy enough keep. Uh, so I will keep. Now, my opponent will decide if they're going to keep, and uh, there is a little bit of a trick. Since I know the matchup, I can decide, hey, maybe I'd like to keep up the Spell Pierce. Uh, but, oh, yep. You too! <laughs> Exclamation mark. Yay, alright. So, trick. We're going to play a land. That's a given. Hello. Go. There it is. Okay. It took it long enough, but it got there eventually. Alright, so we have a land. Now, we can decide... The fact that I've done it for this long probably indicates to my opponent, yeah, you've got a Spell Pierce, dude. So we're going to uh, we're gonna play this out. They're almost certainly not going to have a turn one... Um, a turn one Cranial Plating, which is really what I would like for that to be. Because Cranial Plating is stupidly difficult for this deck to be. Hello! Well, that was quick. Okay, Ravager. Now, that's what I was expecting turn one. Um, but cranial plating, often no. Hmm. Okay. Well, let's see what we draw. There's Mutavault. You know, that's not, that's not bad. Harbinger is fun, but until we get to four mana, we won't be able to do as much with it, unfortunately. Uh, I would like to save the Spreading Seas. And the reason is because if they get out an Ink Moth Nexus, I might be in trouble. An Ink Moth, or even a Blink Moth for that matter, uh, because there's a Ravager there. So what I'm inclined to do is hold up the Trickster and, and uh, I guess the Spell, I mean obviously the Spell Pierce too. So there is a little bit of a catch. Let me, let me read this, because I want to make sure I do this correctly. Um, yeah, so that's that, and then <laughs> uh, target loses all abilities until end of turn. So I would have to do the if I do this, then um, they can just respond, of course, with more triggers. So that that doesn't seem like it does very much, unfortunately. So we're just going to play this out. Maybe we'll get something, but not too too terribly likely. And then we will pass the turn. Worst comes to worst, we'll be able to add a counter to it, draw a discard. But I really need to save, I think I really need to save that Spreading Sea so I don't just get Ink Moth this game. Which is a very technical magic term, Ink Moth. Hmm. Shoutouts to Fox. And by the way, while we're waiting on my opponent, yeah. so I, I play Fox in Melee. Let me do this right over my computer like a genius. Zero Fox given. As you do. 
blip blip toya. And uh, this is something Eva Evangeline <laughs> made yesterday. I made her her own coloring book, and this is her Jigglypuff she did. Um, <laughs> you can see some semblance of order on there. Like, she had brown eyes like, uh, like her Auntie Jody, And the sky is supposed to be a sunset. Oh, okay. All right, I should pay attention again, because we have stuff happening. So there's a glimmer void. You know, okay. Hopefully this is just an ungodly flooded hand, but I, I have a sneaking suspicion that's not what this is. Um, hmm. All right, what you got? Vault Scourge. Uh, yeah, I guess. We're gonna say, uh, no response. I mean, yeah. <laughs> what can you do? <sighs> now, my opponent, since they know my deck list, also happens to know that I have Spell Pierce. Even if it's only a two of, they know there's Spell Pierce, so, you know. And, and plus, I did delay a bit earlier, um, unfortunately, which might have given to my opponent, hey, look, he, he might have a Spell Pierce. That's why I was trying to think through it quickly, Benthic Biomancer or Spell Pierce. I didn't think it likely enough that my opponent was going to drop a turn one cranial plating for me to keep that up. But you can also use it on something like a... You know, I also could have done it in... Uh, had I not played the Biomancer? All right. Yeah, we're going to say Alert Response. Going to do this. Add a counter. Make you a little bit bigger. And then probably discard... So this is one of those weird spots I actually am okay with keeping the island. Um, and the, the reason is because we have a Harbinger that we will be able to uh, flash in in a bit. Only deals with tap creatures, but that's alright. Now, it also gives us enough mana to play a two-drop... Well, that's not that big a deal, because we have a land anyway. Um, I will get another draw, uh, I, I, so I won't be able to play Harbinger this turn, no matter what, if I want to use its flash ability, if I want to use it to deal with something like that. Um, hmm. Ooh, this is tough. This is tough. See, all of these cards seem okay, but I think the correct answer is probably ditch the island and just hope I get another island. Uh, what I'm going to do next is probably... Do I want to do the spreading seat now? Mmm. Mmm. Jay. Ooh. Ooh. This is tough. I'm, I'll, I'll tell you what. It's probably Spell Pierce, because I'm getting really close to Spell Pierce not doing anything for the rest of the game. Um, but, it still can. Trickster isn't doing very much. Uh, so we might ditch the Trickster, actually. I, I think I need a clock, though. Yep, alright, Island. I love you, man. Hello. Touchpads. Touchpad OP. Please nerf. Okay. Uh, well, we, we got something. Kapala's okay. Yeah, so forgive me if that was incorrect, folks. If that was the wrong move, I am just dumb. That's what we're going with. Alright, so Spreading Seas, going to target Glimmer Void, and I'll draw a card. Yeah, so there we go, there's that. Uh-oh, folks, we didn't get there, so we still have another draw to get a, to get a, an island, though. Uh, or any land, for that matter, in order to have this ready for Flash. Uh, but other than that, we're just going to pass the turn and probably take a big chunk of change here. Probably going to take a lot of damage. I see a Ravager and a Vault Scourge. That doesn't usually go too well for you. It does mean that if they have a Cranial Plating, they won't be able to... Oh, is that a Memnite? Yeah, that's a Memnite. They won't be able to do anything at instant speed with it, because they won't have two colored mana. They only have one so far. And I'm assuming Memnite was the top deck, because it's a zero drop that they didn't play last turn. There's a... never mind, there's a Spire of Industry. Okay, well, never mind then. 
So yeah, the Spell Pierce is probably the one that should have gone. Um... Okay, so I can take the Biomancer here, block the Arcbound Ravager, and then they can dump some counters into it. That's not a bad move, actually. That's not a bad move. Yeah, so that's probably what we're going to do. When this enters the battlefield, return target tap creature and opponent controls to its owner's hand. The problem with doing that, though, is that if I let them build counters on the Ravager, and they then they can just sack the Ravager in response and put it on the Vault Scourge. Yeah. There's not really much of a way that I can get out of this right here. We're going to probably have to say no blocks. No blocks. Alright, what you got? Damage. Alright, cool. Take Just taking the two. Alright. I'm gaining one. Okay, let's see. Moment of truth. Did we get there? We did not. We got something, but we didn't get that. Um... Hmm... Well, if this, if this slow start continues, I can put my opponent in a less than good spot here. If I just play out Miro Regery. I can put my opponent a tiny bit behind on tempo by playing the Harbinger here, but I, I don't think that that's ideal. Um, note to self, Spell Pierce is the one to go. I thought maybe my opponent was going to stay close enough on lands that I could hit their... Like, if they had a cranial plating, I could hit it. And that's really what's keeping me in the game. I haven't seen a plating yet. Alright. Going to open ourselves up to Galv Blast here. But this is uh, tap or untap target permanent. So next turn, I'll be able to play a master and untap one, and I'll still have two mana open. Uh, not that that's necessarily enough. Unfortunately. Um, but we're probably going to have to say pass here. That is, at, at the very least, that's a 3-3 Benthic Biomancer. So we can we can make it tough on our opponent. Um, hopefully, anyway. That's the, that's the game plan. Next turn, we're going to have Island Walk. Oh, Gal Blast. Gal Blast is good. That's okay. That's why we run that out first. Okay. Given that they just had cards in their hand and their affinity, I'm assuming, I'd assume that there's a Gal Blast in there, but, you know, you do what you have to do. That's why we run that out first instead of the Island Walk one, because the Island Walk will definitely be unblockable. At least that's the game plan. Uh, and because I didn't keep the Island, I couldn't hold up Spell Pierce for it. Not that it would have mattered anyway. We'd be, they'd still have enough mana to pay. Hmm. All right, well, I'm tapped out. Once again, I can try to pull some shenanigans here, um, but it's still just a 2-2. And I, I think I have just a little bit of time left before I have to start going on a blocking spree. Um... So if I make them sacrifice one of their, uh, their, see, either their Mox Opal or their Dark Steel Citadel, I can try to turn Spell Pierce back on. Um, here's what I mean. If I play the Benthic Biomancer, they put two into the Arcbound Ravager to keep it alive, then they'll, if they put two in, they'll have to get rid of one of these unless they want to mess up one of their attackers. If they do that, I'll have Spell Pierce turn back on and I'll be able to play the Harbinger to bounce it, then they'll put it probably on the Vault Scourge, because that's the Flying Lifelink one. Um, see, it's not looking particularly great, but the sooner I do this, the sooner I can stem the bleeding. At least that's the hope. So we're going to do it now, actually. 
Alright. Blocks. Yeah. The sooner I can get my opponent to sacrifice the Arcbound Ravager, then the sooner that I can... Hopefully, anyway, the, the game plan is stem the bleeding a little bit. Alright, see, there's one. There's one. Okay. Okay, and the Memnite. I guess that kind of makes sense, so we're putting three in. Alright, I'm waiting for my opponent to say that they're done now. Damage. Okay, there, it's dead. It's dead, Jim. And I'll take the one. Alright. There's Ink Moth. Okay. We got there, folks. So, yeah, do it now. Abs that kind of forces my hand. I, I have to get rid of this now. I don't really have a choice here. And we're going to target source, target you. Alright, make him bounce it. And by bounce it, I mean sack it into other stuff. Okay. Yep, so putting those three counters in. Okay, that's fine. They didn't put it on the Ink Moth Nexus. That would actually be a slightly faster kill. Though, because I'm Merfolk, it, it makes sense to be a little bit patient there. Um, and then we'll pass the turn. That may not have been right, but it also may have been right to have done that the turn prior. Because if I had done that the turn prior, then I think this Vault Scourge would be... Yeah, it, they would have to uh, sack something other than the Memnite. So, Ornithopter or the Mox Opal. No, that's wrong. They had Memnite last turn. They had Memnite the turn before it, so that's fine. It, that's the reason it was able to attack, because it wasn't summoning sick anymore. Um, okay. Yep. Yup. One, two, three, four, and one Infect. Ink Moth, you betray me! Alright, now this life total is getting a little out of hand. A little bit. Let's see what we can do. Not, not a whole lot it's looking. It's not looking like we can do a whole lot here. Oh, did I... Did I put that up? One, two... Oh, crap. I thought that I clicked that, but... Oh well. Oops. Alright, here we go. Is that a... Oh, that's a signal pest. Oh, this... This is getting better and better all the time. Oh well, okay, that's okay. That's okay. Spreading seas on you, buddy. May have had an instance of frozen... Uh, of my browser being frozen again. Alright, so this isn't looking great. Um, now... Now what are we going to do, Brian? What are we going to do, Brian? I can really use another land here. And there's essentially no chance that this spell pierce does anything, so this is a this is a pretty stagnant hand. We're just too slow, folks. With that signal pest especially, we are just too slow. Alright, we'll pass the turn. What's this again? Infection form. Huh? I mean... Oh, did I not... I thought that I got that. I mean, I, I could have sworn I clicked on that and it changed to one. Maybe that's what happened with the life total as well. Whatever, I'll watch it back when I'm editing. Let's see. Let's see. Alright. Ornithopter hits for one. Vault Scourge hits for one plus three plus one. So that's six. Oh, whoa, what just happened there? Okay. Yeah, not much I can do about it. It's in the air. All right. Well, here goes nothing. Please do another. Please do another. 
I swear to God, I hate this so much. Well, I thought I might have an extra turn, but now we are we are simply dead on board. All right. Uh, game two. Game two. So this was your win, and we'll do some sideboards. All right, so Ceremonious Rejection is an easy in. That's kind of a given. Echoing Truth is weird. Um, so I think Vapor Snag is supposed to be better in this matchup. It's the creatures that I'm worried about for the most part, right? It, it, even if it's a cranial plating that's down, I can still bounce the creature to buy me a little bit of time. The downside to doing it that way, though, is that they can Echoing Truth it on... I mean, not Echoing Truth. They can use the Instant Speed Black Black to move it on to another creature in combat. Um, Vapor Snag's not bad, though. It, it really can punish the opponent for going entirely all-in. Um, now, let's see. What do I take out here, though? Well, we know that they're bringing in Dispatch, so I don't want to take out Kapala. Uh, Thassa's... Maybe a little slow? I don't know that this is necessarily a Thassa match. Mistcaller does absolutely jack-all here. It's a very technical term, jack-all. Um, Thassa... So the indestructible doesn't matter for dispatch, but otherwise you're a 5-5 and you can make one of my creatures unblockable. Scry one for consistency. Uh, so spell pierce when I'm on the play... Let's see... So, main board it hits, Galp Blast, Opal's Welding Jar, da 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 okay. Yeah, I probably do want to keep it. I, I actually didn't even remember about Experimental Frenzy because that's not usually what you see. Uh, hmm. Hmm. Spell Pierce, Thassa, Spell Pierce, oh, Wizard's Retort, and then probably an Echoing Truth. So I'm going to try it this way. Alright. See how it goes. Oh, hello. Hello. Are we still on Vancouver Mole? The league was started, our lists list were submitted, etc., with the Vancouver Mole being the case. So even though, as of when you're recording this, it's not a London... I mean, it's... As, as of when you're watching this, it's London Mole. I need more coffee. Wasn't when we started this. Okay, so we're going to mull this because we have to. Uh, no keep checking. Would it have worked? Nope. Nope. Very bad. Okay, cool. Oh, crap. That's not what I meant to do. <laughs> not what I meant to do. Lol. Okay, okay. Let's try this again, shall we? Okay. Mulligan minus one. There we go. Okay. This hand is garbage. But my opponent's having to do it too. I think I'm supposed to keep this and scry. With the scry, I think that I'm okay to do this. This is really risky. Those four islands don't do a lot. Alright, so what we're doing is we're going to... Oh, it's over here. Look at the top card. What's it going to be? Ooh. Well, I mean, let's see. Let's, let's think about this for a moment. Turn one, Aether Vial. Then comes the Silver Gill. Then I won't be able to play it. Uh, until turn two, and I can flash it in. Um, 
do I take? I think I'm supposed to take that over. No, I'm, I'm not supposed to take that. We're going we're gonna to put that on the bottom. Like, uh, like that. All right. Well, buddy, that could just be another land, but if I keep it and then draw, I'm going to hit that land anyway from the draw. So it's, it's all right. We'll live. Good old ether vial. I don't feel very good about this game, unfortunately. I don't think that this game is going to go in my favor. Okay. Yeah, that's, uh, that's what you do. Ink Moth and Evolt Scourge at 18. Okay. Well. Oh no, I, I uh, did upkeep before untap. Oh god. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, there's a Rejury. Play an island. Pass the turn. Okay. So curiously, it, it makes some sense to play Kapala first to protect my Rejury. Because we know, we know my opponent's bringing in more, uh, hate. Oop, yeah, there we go. Alright. What you got? Uh, shh. Okay. No response. I'm probably supposed to say thinking there, actually. <laughs> you know, as you do. Alright. Gotta play something here. Really, really soon. That's not something. That's not enough, folks. Alright. Uh... Alright, here goes nothing. And then pass. And then... Yeah, don't. I'm not gonna concede, I'm gonna keep playing, but this doesn't look great. Okay. Double Steel Overseer. Well, I guess that would make Echoing Truth better if it came up, though now it's a little too late for that. Jigglypuff, save me! Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, Dak. Oh my goodness, I hate you so much right now. I mean, uh... <laughs> okay. Well. Yeah? This is going to hurt. Oh, this is going to hurt. Echoing truth now, or else I'm gonna cry. One, one, two. And by cry, I mean the fish will be sad. Alright. I think I'm supposed to put this to three. There's a little chat. There it is. There it is. Thinking. Hmm. You you win zero percent of the games that you can see. So we're not going to do that. Doesn't look to be a way that I can win from here though. Think of what I could do. Um, it doesn't proc itself, mirror rejury. So I can play, can cast rejury. No, there's no, there's no need to cast it. Just hold it up. I don't have anything else to do anyway. One. Play another ether vial.
Am I supposed to attack? I, I am supposed to attack here. Swing my 2 2 into the 2 2. Like, they're, they're going to take it. But if they don't take it, if they block, I'll be able to take out the Steel Overseer. No blocks. Yep, just two. I, I guess I can flash it in just to get the extra one point. I mean, is there anything to be gained from... They're just going to tap both of them, right? So it's fine to flash it in for the extra damage. Yeah, even if I had Merfolk Trickster now, they could just tap it in response, so... That's not great. Mm. It doesn't even change the amount of damage I would take. I could use it to tap down the Vault Scourge uh, before combat, so beginning of combat. And that's really about it, so... Whoa. Okay, that's... Interesting, but that works. That works. Yeah, this is what happens, folks. And this was me being... Uh, liberal with my sideboard options. This is me putting in more cards. Whoa, okay, what's that? Oh, okay, okay. They're, so they're using the Glimmer Void to animate the Ink Moth. It's not untapped, but it's going to get a counter here no matter what. So, fair enough. Fair enough. Let's see how many people are spectating this. I mean, you all, of course, but, uh, who else? Nope, just us. Just us for now. Yeah, Merfolk is unfortunately a deck that sometimes can kind of just play itself. Alright. Swing seven. Yeah, that's what I'm seeing, so take seven. Alright, top decks of glory. Actually, it... it this doesn't make any difference here, but supposedly top decks of glory. Alright, so untap, add a counter, draw a card. I feel like just doing an attack here just to do it. Yeah, it's two plus three. So that's it. Alright. Blocks? No blocks. Five. Good game. <laughs> Yeah! It happens. There's only a 20 land deck, as I recall. 15 islands, a boro, three muta vaults, and a cavern. Eh. No worries. That's just the name of the game. Eh, what can you do? What can you do? Alright. 2x ceremonious rejection? Let's see. What else we. Oh! Fix that real quick. Oh, hello. Lowercase. <laughs> it matters. It totally matters. Um. 2 vapor snag. And 1 echoing truth. You all know, but just trying to be polite. Outs were. Two Spell Pierce, two Mist Callers, I guess they're called Mist Caller, and one Thassa, a two, and you. you know, conveniently, that was enough coffee to get through that horrible game, that horrible match. Merfolk, why? Okay, to be fair, Affinity is one of Merfolk's worst matchups, as I understand it. 
uh, it's not particularly great. And in order to make it okay when you go to sideboards, you bring in you would have to bring in so many cards for the matchup that it would hurt you in other matchups. So you just hope that sometimes your spreading seeds will hit the land creatures. You hope that sometimes you'll just get them with a uh, with a, a harbinger. Running two ether grid. Yep. Two dispatch. Yep. For one frenzy, welding jar and memnites. Okay. So I'm actually a little bit. Sur I mean, welding jar obviously out. Frenzy. I'm surprised that One Frenzy even came out. I'll even say that. Frenzy came out. It's so good against me. I would think, anyway. Yeah, still... Still good inclusions. I mean, I like to think so. Spreading Seas is the thing that unfortunately makes its champion a little awkward. Didn't expect you to board out Pierce. Yeah, um... I think it makes sense when I'm bringing in answers like Vapor Snag and Echoing Truth. No kidding. Anything you want to say to you two? I mean, plug yourself. Plug yourself, dude. And I know it's a dude in this case. <laughs> I guess we're at an age where just everybody's a dude past a certain point. <laughs> I guess that depends on where you live. If you're in California, everyone's a dude, right? I'm cl I don't know. Like, oh, I just realized I, I typed so quickly that I spelled like horribly. I cry like every time. <laughs> oh, well. Maybe it's going to take a sec. Or they're having to think. He's having to think what he wants to say. In the meantime, more Jigglypuff. Okay, so there's a, this is a little coloring book I made for. Mom, get the camera! <laughs> just a play and place magic. Let's see, what's another one she's done on here? She's drawn a little bit on these, but none to the same extent. Like, some of these, she's she's drawn a little bit. Yeah, Sarah and Duck and Pokemon. That's that's what this whole coloring book is. <laughs> it's all good. I'm glad I'm not, like, uh, balding up here, because every time I lean down <laughs> to type. <laughs> Alright. If you'd ever like to test... Casually, just let me know. All right. If you'd ever like to test, how did I miss that? Just getting ahead of myself. Do like your content. We'll definitely watch the replay of this. I'll try to remember to let you know. I'll do my best. It's. Uh, <laughs> I feel silly doing that. I know that's not terribly uncommon. A person knows the, their thought and just kind of skips over part of it as their brain gets ahead of their hands. Still, it's not like this is happening while you're being recorded or anything. Yeah. Oh well. <laughs> oh well. That's it. Take care, Magic Community. I will see you later. Bye bye. Woo! Sometimes I feel so dumb. <laughs>